Doctors Hospital is a private hospital in the Cayman Islands offering first-class medical service and cutting-edge technology. I am Dr. Yaron Rado. I'm the chairman of the board of Doctors Hospital and the chief radiologist. In these videos, we are going to be sharing the latest developments in healthcare that Doctors Hospital is bringing to the Cayman Islands. In this episode, we're going to talk with Dr. Ivan Wong, visiting orthopedic surgeon with Cayman Orthopedic Group. We'll talk about our new 3D printing service for joints. Ivan, thank you for coming to our new Doctors Hospital YouTube channel. We have started um, our first round on the coronavirus because that is what, what's yes. happening in the medical field yes. and um, that is affecting everyone. But you do so many cool things here with us. And I wanted to ask you about a couple of things. Um, the thing that is obviously for me as a radiologist closest to the heart is our newest um, addition to the cutting edge technology that we provide and that is the 3D printer. Yes, well, thank you very much for having me here. It's an honor, really, to work with uh, CTMH. It's a wonderful group and wonderful to work with yourself. Thank you. So I must say, this is, uh, this is great that in uh, Cayman Islands that we get to embrace uh, 3D printing. Um, this technology obviously has been around for a little bit of time, but it's actually been very difficult to figure out where the benefits uh, for patient mm. care would be. Um, and to see that uh, CTMH is actually leading the charge on this is wonderful. So as you can see here, you guys have, uh, have uh, uh, purchased the first uh, 3D printer used for medical use uh, here in Cayman Islands. We're able to take that information, take patient uh, specific information, put it into a 3D picture so that we can be able to do surgery better, faster and more in minimally invasive than anyone else. So if this would be my hip and I would be a patient, what would you tell me on this? Is this more for you or is it for you for the conversation with the patient? I think it's for both of those things. Okay. Uh, because as a patient, it's very difficult to understand exactly what is wrong and why the pain is going there. Mm -hmm. So we're able, to, as, as physicians, we're able to do uh, a history of which we can ask you questions and try to describe why that's a problem. We can do physical exam of which we can demonstrate where the problem comes. We can take imaging of x-ray and, uh, and CT scans and MRIs to be able to show you on a, on a screen but it's a whole nother way to be able to understand, to be able to hold your own hip in your hands yeah. and to be able to move it to understand where yeah, the, something where like this cam would bang up against yes. you. So once patients start seeing this, moving this and feeling this, they all of a sudden understand exactly what we're doing. Because what we're doing is, is, is um, uh, very specific, is to remove any impingement and any damage that can cause, that causes early arthritis yeah. and hopefully preserve a hip to last its natural life. So I, I remember I've been um, following your um, many many of your talks that you have given that you are a proponent of doing of looking into the joint as early as possible to catch the osteoarthritis changes before you cannot do anything about them anymore. Absolutely. So so my specialty is sports medicine. And sports medicine really encompasses uh, all patients uh, that come in that want to be taken care of in a way that preserves their body. So my goal is to prevent any form of joint replacement. And to do something like this, if you can see on a, on a hip, there are certain spurs on there that can lead to premature wear and early damage. So if we're able to go in there and remove the spurs and repair the hip, the hip can actually last its whole lifetime. We now have research showing that we can get excellent results. Get Patients can live an entire life without requiring a hip replacement if we can get to this early. Wow. We have lots of data to show that if we don't do this, this is probably the leading cause of hip arthritis. And only now do we have the technology to be able to remove this. With the 3D printing, the most important aspect is now we're able to understand the geometry and the intricacies of the hip to be able to do a better job because we know if we do a great job during surgery, we get a great result with our patients. Wow. I wasn't aware of that. That's really cool. Yeah. So this, again, this 3D print is for both the patient yeah. and the surgeon. And we've actually just completed a large uh, sample to show that with a 3D model, uh, you know, we've done, or I've done more than 3,000 of these. So I'm one of the uh, more advanced uh, hip arthroscopy uh, experts yes. uh, out there. Um, but with in, the 3D I want to say, in the world. In the I world, want, I, yes. want to, I want to jump into this in a moment. Yes. yes uh, so in the world. And we always talk about a learning curve. But even 10 years into practice with a 3D model, 
I can be better able to understand the geometry of hip during surgery to get better results. Wow. Does that mean that you take this into surgery and then when you're in the middle of the operation, you're like, bring, I need, to, I need to see the model. Absolutely. So Seriously? during yeah, surgery, cool. you can ask the, the, the nurses, the, everyone who works with me, yeah. the model is actually very close and they hold it up to me, be able to show me exactly what I'm looking at, where I'm going, just to make sure we're doing exactly what we plan to do. Because cool. it's very easy to get confused. We're doing the whole surgery to remove the bone spur, to fix the whole hip. We're doing it all through two little poke holes that's less than a centimeter in size. Yeah. And we don't cut a single muscle. We don't cut a single, uh, we don't cut anything in there. And to be able to do that so patients can go back to living their life uh, without problems is essential. And then to be able to do it well is even more critical. So that's where this 3D model comes in. It allows us to do our job much better, much safer, and through very small incisions so patients can go back to their life faster. You're an associate professor at Dalhousie University and um, you've been coming down to the Cayman Islands for how long? For about eight years now. Eight years now, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Wow. So what does uh, a professor who has most of the most experience in hip joints to come to the Cayman Islands. I mean, we, what we are talking about here is what, what we are trying to live up to your expectations. You called me on Saturday and said, yeah. I need that hip by Tuesday morning. Yeah. And I was trying to get that together for you. And um, I, I was there with my wife and we thought like, um, and, she's, and I said like, sorry, I need to go to the hospital. And she's like, why? I said, because if Dr. Wong calls and has, brings first world cutting edge medicine to the table, I need to jump. Yeah. yeah, and so so we did that. But what brings you to the island? Well, I must say, I first came down here. It was a wonderful experience. It's been it's been great for me. Um, again, working here has been fantastic. Uh, to, so to be able to bring uh, cutting edge technology uh, to new areas requires a lot of teamwork. Mm -hmm. And I must say, coming down to Cayman Island, this place has been a wonderful source of teamwork. We have great nurses. We have great staff. We have great patients. We have great. Uh, 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 post-op care with uh, physiotherapy, uh, um, athletic therapy and trainers. Um, so to be able to find a place that is able to provide the care that, that patients really deserve is one thing. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to work with a hospital system um, that can be able to create the, something like this for a 3D model on an instant basis um, is another story because not every place can do or can invest in things like this. Yeah. I know this hospital has invested on all the latest arthroscopic equipment out yes. there. So there is nothing that this place cannot offer that that is available and, and that is on the leading edge technology where most places require large open surgeries with a lot of morbidity. You can now do this in Cayman Island with small tiny incisions and getting patients again back to life very quickly. It's 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 that's the reason why I'm here yeah. is to be able to provide this care for because a small can. island because we can because yeah. normally to be able to provide this care you need a very large center mm -hmm. uh, in fact a tertiary center a university center because we do so much research and it takes so many patients and so many so so large a team to be able to provide this level of care whereas in Cayman Island you actually have a group together working together to be able to provide tertiary level care in a very small island. Uh, I think everybody here is is willing to wear many caps. Mm. Yeah, and it's not like, oh, that is be below me. Absolutely. Uh, it's like, you know, when you're here, I always thought of myself that um, if I cannot do it, the next stop is Miami. Mm. So I, and, and that has its own intricacies. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if a patient needs something and I can provide it, um, I will provide it. And, yeah. and absolutely. So I, I think that's the first thing I learned when I came to uh, Cayman Islands. I yeah. learned that a lot of the, uh, the specialized care was being sent off island yeah. uh, to a very expensive place. And it's actually very difficult for patients to get good care if they're not treated somewhere close to home. So would you compare the service that you can provide here at Doctors Hospital to what you can provide in Canada to be similar? I would say it's as good at if as good as if not better. So the nice Happy part of that. being at Doctors Hospital is, uh, for example, uh, we called you on the weekend, said, "Look, we have a new patient. He needs surgery quite urgently. Uh, we need a 3D model to be able to do this." Yeah. And instantly, it was done. You came in on a weekend to using technology that you have but have not tried yet, and we're able to produce the the information that we need. Yes, and I was sending you a by. But yeah, WhatsApp, the video of I can't get this one, these Absolutely. two things together. So, so I'll tell you, in Canada, we can provide state-of-the-art level one care. Um, but the problem is, is in Canada, it, there, there is a wait and there's yeah. a time frame. The nice part of being down here is you've actually done the exact same care that, that we can provide in Canada. 
without that weight. And patients get this care instantly, and that's what we actually need. So it's a combination of these things, the technology and the ability to provide care on a timely basis yeah. is the ideal thing for all patients. Let me segue into this, um, because medical tourism is also one thing that we talk about. Do you guys have, if, if, if I listen to this, I think like, wow, if I would be a patient in Canada, why don't I come to the wonderful Cayman Islands, um, sit on the beach and have Dr. Wong operate on my hip? Absolutely. So medical tourism is of interest uh, worldwide. In fact, mm. um, we our group here does not uh, does not uh, advertise not for uh, for medical tourism. Where our, our main focus is, is to take care of the local population to offer them uh, subspecialty level care that they would never be able to to have in a small island like this. Yeah. So we are a group of 10 surgeons that each do very specific operations in orthopedic surgery. And we're so subspecialized that we actually very rarely cross over to other people. But we are able to offer this service year round by staggering the dates that we're down here. Yeah. I've heard from patients um, that they are unhappy with Cayman Orthopedic Group because they would come and see you and then they would come to see another doctor and then they wouldn't know when to come back. So what would you tell these patients? Well, these, this is the education part we try to emphasize on. Mm. We don't have a single doctor here year round. Yes. We change every week to two weeks because every one of us is different in our capacity. We do not do all surgeries. We only do what we're very specialized and skilled to do so that we can be able to provide care that is next to none. So we only do the things we're best at And then we also know what our colleagues are because we work as a team. And so we'll hand off that uh, uh, case that's specific for somebody to be able to get them all ready, get them ready for that surgeon when they come down so that they can have all their care done when that surgeon's here. So our mandate is very different from yes. how, how most other people go see an orthopedic surgeon. We'll find you the best surgeon at the best time so you can get the best care. But then you would have to wait. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, there's a little wait. <laughs> we all rotate. Um, if, if it doesn't happen that you're the right guy is there when you need him. Absolutely. So, so do you think it's worth waiting? Absolutely. So surgery is very specific. If you don't get the best surgery done, you won't have the best outcomes afterwards. Yeah. It's not something that you go in and take a medicine for and that's it. And every surgeon's the same. By, by no means is that the case. Surgery is very individual. If you have a good surgeon able to provide you with the best uh, uh, ability to uh, reproduce whatever anatomy is there, then you'll have a best chance of having a good outcome. If you have a surgeon that does everything, it's very difficult to be the best at In every specific yeah. procedure. If you have a surgeon, for example, I'm, I'm a sports surgeon, I only do arthroscopy and I only focus on the shoulder, hip and knee. So yeah. very, very few things that I actually do. But those things I would consider myself an expert in. Yeah. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your colleagues. Yes. Um, so what are the specialties that you guys provide? Where, do you, where, where are your specialty pockets? So each one of us complements the other. Um, again, my specialty is sports medicine. I take care of all joint preservation procedures of the shoulder, hip and knee. We have certain surgeons who are specialized in the foot and ankle only. So if you have foot and ankle problems, they start off taking care of the sports related surgery. So doing all, everything through minimal invasive means from arthroscopy all the way up to joint replacement. So we can do everything. But again, very surgeon specific. We have two very different surgeons focusing on different aspects of the problems in the foot and ankle. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at foot and ankle. Yes. Of the knees, we have very specialized surgeons. Some surgeons will specialize just on Uh, preservation like ligament reconstruction, cartilage reconstruction. We have very different surgeons, two other surgeons, very specific on joint replacements to get the best possible outcome if you need a joint replacement because arthritis got to the end stage. And so we have everything in between, but again, spread over four or five different surgeons because we all focus on different aspects. We do the same thing for each and every joint in the human body, hip, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand. I think, um, What is really hard to understand as a patient and as a layperson is to gauge the quality of a doctor. Yeah? Absolutely. It's, I think this is, the, the, it's a pro I mean, even I have the same problem. I know you, I've seen your talks. I, I, I have the um, advantage of even having seen you operate. But on the other hand, if I'm a standard patient who has no idea um, and I come to you and you say, well, we need to do this and that. And then I go for a second opinion, which is very rampant on this island, and mm -hmm. a third and a fourth, and mm -hmm. then uh, better let go to Miami. Um, I think the main problem is, is 
um, and that's also, to be honest, that's one of the reasons I started this YouTube channel, mm -hmm. is to make people understand how lucky we are of the technology and the, and the quality of um, doctors that we actually can provide on this island. And often you get better surgery, better quality, better imaging, um, better 3D printing, mm -hmm. and um, a more complete um, service than you could expect in the United States. That's and right. depending on where you're going to the United States, it might actually be on a complete different level um, of what we are providing here. Absolutely. So, so you're asking a very important question. It is very difficult for patients to navigate the healthcare system. The United States is probably a very good example of this. So you got the top level care in the United States, but you also have not so great surgeons. And surgery, if we talk about surgery specifically, is very surgeon dependent. Yeah. So the quality of the surgery you get will definitely affect your outcome. At at least the Cayman Island, uh, Cayman Orthopedic Group, very specific on choosing the surgeons to be partners in this. And so these surgeons are the best in their own fields. They are in Canada. And the nice part of being in Canada is the standards are very similar all the way through Canada. There's no large discrepancy between the best surgeons and the worst surgeons uh, because it's a uh, universal healthcare. So everyone gets treated exactly the same. Um, for here in Cayman, it is very important for patients to be able to understand their surgery and ask those questions. So when patients come to me, I encourage them to get second opinions, third opinions. I encourage them to go look on YouTube, go look on Google to write down the questions. But the important thing is, is to actually write down the questions and ask their surgeon. And only when they're comfortable with those answers, should they choose that surgeon. What, what questions would that be? Probably the most important question to ask is, how many of these surgeries do you do per year? And if that answer is less than 50, I would probably choose a different surgeon. <laughs> and so I'll tell you, the reason why I don't specifically practice all the time in Cayman Island, or any of my group do, is because I cannot do more than 50 hip arthroscopies here in a year. Because as, as, a, as a sports-specific surgeon, I roughly need a population of 2 million people to refer to me to be able to do the numbers of surgery that I need to do to be able to be the best in the field. Yeah. You have done a couple of firsts in yes. the Cayman Islands. We've done many firsts in Cayman Island. Um, and the nice part is, is because we, we've designed many of these surgical techniques in Canada. And so bringing it down to Cayman Island is very easy. Again, you with your uh, with the doctor's hospital has been very kind to be able to get this equipment because the equipment to do this surgery is very expensive. Mm. And so to have the investment from a hospital system to be able to do those is very lucky, and which is why I enjoy coming down here to work. Eye watering expensive. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so we've we've been the first to create a uh, to use a bioinductive implant to improve the healing rates in rotator cuff repairs because rotator cuff repairs have a very high chance of failure because the, the 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 structure of the tendon is usually degenerative. It's usually as we get older, the tissue is not as good. So we need new technology to be able to help it heal better. What is a bioinductive implant? Yeah, so a bioinductive implant is a is a implant that increases the ability of something to heal. Okay. It's probably one of the first in orthopedic surgery. It was designed and produced by by companies to be able to show that we can increase the healing of a rotator cuff, whereas all the other uh, treatments before was meant as repairing a rotator cuff, meaning just securing it to the right spot and letting your body heal. Which, if I remember your talks right, is quite problematic because once your rotator cuff is frayed, um, it's very hard for these end pieces of the muscles that insert into the shoulder um, to actually be, get the strength back that you need. Absolutely. Because the rotator cuff, as we learn about it more and more, the main reason why it fails or why it tears is because of a degenerative process, which mm. means a wearing out process. So even though we have the technology now to do it minimal invasive, which means through tiny little holes, and sew it back down with anchors, which means at least reattaching it just like a tailor would with, a, with, a, with a shirts and clothes, that's not enough. That doesn't improve everyone. That improves most of the people. So now this is the next layer. Now we're using actually biology. We're inducing biology or starting biology, kickstarting it, so that it has a better chance of healing. And all our latest research are showing that, yes, this is actually working. And we're able to provide this care here, which is actually the first time it's provided outside of North America. Unbelievable. Maybe you can give me a level of shoulder surgery. So I get an arthroscopy and you take a look. Mm -hmm. And then you do a rotator cuff repair. Yeah. Um, with a, maybe you just 
um, sew it back or you put an anchor in or you put the bio anchor in. Mm -hmm. So is there, what's, what's, what's the leverage of it? Everything depends on the likelihood of failure. So we spend a lot of time doing research trying to figure out what our outcomes, what our patients are like. And anyone who comes into KME Orthopedic Group will know that they get this tablet, they get a lot of questionnaires. And those questionnaires help us understand how much pain they have how much problem they have, as well as track our outcomes to make sure that what we're doing is the best possible treatment that we can give our patients. From that information, we've actually learned the bigger the tear, the more chance of it to fail. So anytime we need more than one anchor, we now increase our, our technology, which means we add bioinductive implants, we add more shaving, we add more sutures to be able to hold it in the right place to try to decrease the failure rate. Mm -hmm. But small tears, have a better chance of healing. So you make that analogy into small tears in your in your uh, on your pants on your knees. Only make, need a couple stitches to hold in place. Whereas bigger tears, you need patches to hold it in place. So very similar to biology. Small tears only need small amounts of tissue to be able to uh, small amount of equipment to be able to repair it. Bigger tears need more equipment and more inducing uh, 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 biology to be able to make this heal. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the great work you're doing here. I'm very lucky to be able to work with this wonderful team at Doctors Hospital. I look forward to many more years of this to come.